Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, with Fedora 39, one of the most outstanding Linux distributions once again enters the stage of the open source software world. Fedora has made a name for itself in the world of operating systems by combining innovation, freedom and stability in a single package. It delivers cutting-edge software and comes with Red Hat quality. What Fedora 39 pulls out of the hat, we take a closer look now. Stay tuned! The Fedora operating system has become one of the most popular Linux distributions since its first release in 2003. With its regular updates and innovative features, Fedora has gained a large following that appreciates the system stability, security and easy to use. The latest version Fedora 39 promises a number of improvements and new features that makes the operating system even more attractive. Fedora is loosely connected with Red Hat and plays an important role in the Red Hat Cosmos because Fedora is the entry point for newer technologies that are brought to market via CentOS for the stable Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL for short distribution. The importance of Fedora for Red Hat is also characterized by the fact that on the one hand money and on the other hand developer resources are provided. Fedora offers the following editions in addition to the Workstation Edition. Fedora Server as a server operating system, Fedora IoT as an open source platform for Internet of Things ecosystems, Fedora Cloud as a minimal OS for public and private cloud environments, Fedora CoreOS as a minimal automatically updated and container focused OS, Fedora Spins with other desktops such as KDE Plasma or Cinnamon. Fedora is a semi-roll distro that follows the classic point release model but always provides very up-to-date and new software packages within a version. Fedora was thus positioned between classic LTS distros such as Debian or Ubuntu and rolling distros such as Arch or Solus. Expect this minimal requirements for Fedora 39. 2GB dual core processor or newer, 2GB RAM or more, 15GB of disk space or more. More is always better here. The 2GB RAM is button edge for a fractal spin such as with XFCE. For Fedora with GNOME I would recommend at least 8GB RAM better 16GB or more in 2023. Whether an experienced Linux user or just driving into the world of Fedora, Fedora 39 offers a powerful and reliable operating system that meets all desktop needs. With its modern architecture, comprehensive hardware support and innovation features, Fedora 39 is undoubtedly one of the best Linux distributions on the market. But especially for developers who need the latest interfaces and APIs and see too much movement in rolling distros, Fedora is a very good compromise. Just try out and experience the advantages of Fedora 39 for yourself. What's new? Linux kernel 6.5, GNOME Shell 45, improved search in the activities, Fedora Onyx, a new unchanging spin with Budgie desktop, Fedora Azure Cloud Image. Fedora Onyx was introduced a few months ago and is aimed at users who appreciate the Fedora computing platform and budget desktop environment but need the added immutability and atomic capabilities of RPM OS 3. Fedora 39 has introduced an official Fedora cloud image for Microsoft Azure. This strategic move promises to expand Fedora user base and offers more choices for cloud computing deployments. If you want to get started with Fedora, go to the website of Fedora and click on Get Fedora. Now choose Workstation, scroll a little bit down and click on Download Now. And here go for Intel and AMD and click here on Download. After a few seconds the download of the ISO should start. And don't worry if you see Fedora 38 here. At the time of creating this video Fedora 39 was not yet released. Because of this fact I created this video with the beta version, so don't worry about that. Once the ISO is completely downloaded, you should verify it. How to do this I have already shown in a separate video. Just have a look if you are unsure. Once the ISO is on the disk and has been successfully checked, you can install. In order not to get beyond the scope of this video, I refer to my installation video on Fedora 
There I show step by step the encrypted installation including the setup of correct ButterFS subvolumes. This is important if you want to create snapshots e.g. with timeshift. You're welcome to take a look at the installation process. I think this should clear up any questions. So feel free to have a look. Let's come to the system measurement. My system clawed 8.3 GB of disk space and the initial benchmark value in memory consumption was a whooping 1.8 GB. The number of pre-installed packages was 1915 RPM packages and zero flatpak containers. At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 45.0 was offered. With regards to the offered desktop concept, the magic word is Vanilla GNOME. Perhaps some of you know this from Android with Vanilla Android, for instance, without the provider's interface. It is somewhat similar here. GNOME is delivered blank and does without any customizations as, for example, Ubuntu does the other way around. So we have a blank desktop with no bar at the bottom or left and also no desktop icons. There's a bar at the top which opens the previous mentioned activities overview. If you click here, you see it was formerly named as activities in the top left. It seems to me that Fedora users don't have a problem with this either. Be it because they like and use vanilla GNOME or have always added extensions and thus take the desktop set up with them from upgrade to upgrade. I don't know. GNOME relies more on keyboard shortcuts and multi-touch gestures. If this is not your thing, like me, there are also GNOME extensions that can be added via the extension manager. Just go to the GNOME Software Center and search for extension and then choose extension manager. With the extension manager you can also search for extensions and then install them and then configure them all in one app. If you do not like the window design in general, this can also be revised. The GNOME Tweaks tool, which you can find in the App Center, is available as a solution. There you can add minimize and maximize to the top right like Windows or also you can move them to the left like macOS does and then you can have it as you want. Let's take a quick look at a desktop. Fedora always provides a set of background images which are not bad at all. Let's take a quick look at the Fedora spins. These come with the following desktop versions KDE Plasma 5.27 LTS, XFCE 4.18, Budgie Desktop 10.8, Cinnamon 5.8, LXQT 1.3. Now let's check the pre installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.5. As browser, there's Firefox. As email client, there is nothing pre installed. As office package, there's LibreOffice and a software container, there's Flatpak. Fedora delivers a minimal software stack. This has been on the horizon for a very long time over many Fedora versions. The idea behind is not that bad. One concentrates on the operating system and provides the most necessary. No more, no less. What the users need, they have to install themselves in the GNOME Software Center, for instance. Here you can find everything you need for everyday life. Thanks to the integrated Flatpak container format, not only are the in-house apps in RPM format present, but many more additional apps, including proprietary apps such as Spotify, Zoom, Slack or Microsoft Edge, for example. Fedora 39 provides UKI, that means uniform kernel image, to modernize the boot process. The difference to the classic boot process is that a uniform UKI kernel image is used as part of the installation of the kernel package instead of generated initRD image, which is generated on the distro infrastructure and also digitally signed by the distro. The Fedora spins are, as already briefed mentioned, the regular Fedora Workstation Edition, but with a different desktop like KDE Plasma, Cinnamon or XFCE instead of GNOME Shell. So if you use something other than GNOME and want to try Fedora, take a look at the appropriate spin.
And if you are still thinking about DNF5 and Anaconda Web UI, you're right. These were features that were planned in detail but did not make it into version 39. Presumably, they will be added with Fedora 14 next year in April. Fedora 39 was originally scheduled for 17 October 2023. However, the date was postponed due to known bugs in the current beta version. At the time of creating this video, October 30 was hoovering around. But this date can also be postponed again. It will come out when it's ready. And as I said, I created the video with the pre-release version. So it may be that when you watch the video, Fedora 39 was either not been released yet or has already been released. So let's come to the conclusion. In addition to the technical improvements, Fedora 39 also offers a variety of software updates and new applications. The latest version of the GNOME desktop enables an even more intuitive and user-friendly operation. In addition, popular applications such as LibreOffice, Firefox and GIMP are included in the latest version to provide users with the best tools for their daily tasks. Fedora 39 is a testament to the continued development and innovation of the Fedora project. The developers have worked hard to create an operating system that is suitable for both experienced Linux users and newcomers. With the numerous improvements in the areas of performance, security and usability, Fedora 39 is a real milestone in the history of this Linux distribution. If you like the video and want to stay tuned for more videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel for free. Also feel free to hit the thumbs up button and activate the bell. Please don't forget to write a comment how you liked Fedora 39. Could it something for you? I'm curious. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time. Peace.